Good evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, five-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Deborah Garner. A little bit about her. Deborah's a swimming champion turned author and competitive performance expert. Deborah helps companies and organizational prof- professionals advance to new levels of success with an innovative mentality, streamlined goals for maximum winning results. Considered by many Fortune 500 companies, Deborah is better known as the pit bull in a skirt. A rising international prominence, she accomplishes her work with captivating, energetic, playful, humorous, real-life spirited approach. With a lifetime of competitive experience, Deborah has a wealth of practice from being a marine brat, an Olympic trial swimmer, to a groundbreaking leader as one of the first female sports broadcasters with CBS TV and NBC TV sports reporter for WHO Radio, a 28-year hospitality sales veteran that was just crowned as Miss Arizona American Queen. Deborah is a certified meeting professional recipient, the top 100 motivational speakers for meetings and event professionals, top 50 smart meetings leader by Smart Magazine, top five most requested speakers by Meeting Professionals International, and honored as a Convention Industry Council's top 30 most influential meeting professionals. And recently, Meetings and Convention Magazine poll by Meeting Planners cited Deborah as one of the best speakers ever heard, putting her in the category with Bill Clinton, General Colin Powell, Barbara Cochran, Les Brown, Matt Johnson, and whether in keynoting, facilitating, or consulting, Deborah believes in mastering her craft on the platform by doing television commercial work as an actor, conducting voiceovers and runaway modeling. Deborah lives in Phoenix, Arizona with her husband, Jerry and Lover Boy, Keith the Dog, that is a favorite for program appearances. For more information, you may contact Deborah at www.debragarner.com. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing. Deborah Garner. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'm delighted. What a great introduction. I have to pat myself on the back for uh, writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You are amazing. I'm so excited to have oh. you at the table today. Well, I'm delighted and always delighted to uh, to match up with uh, an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur like yourself. So I'm delighted. Thank you. You are welcome. So, Deborah, please tell listeners more about your amazing entrepreneurial journey. Well, I definitely um, can uh, contest to what you just mentioned earlier, but uh, in the present time, uh, there is a lot going on. As you can tell, I'm very involved in the meetings industry um, and working through with uh, consulting many hospitality groups, um, hospitality companies, um, you know, Marriott, Hilton, Omni, Sheraton, there's all kinds out there, and do a lot of consulting for the senior level um, to provide the best meetings that are out there. You know, there's 1.9 million meetings that happen every year in the United States. So we always want to try to have a, a face-to-face type of connection with everyone every day, um, and that's really hard to do around technology today. So my uh, my goal and my mission is, is to make sure that face-to-face meetings happen, and that seems to be one of my focuses right now, along with rebranding, um, with, uh, you know, teaching leaders how to succeed. I love it. And you're doing an amazing <laughs> job, by the way, okay? You know, Thank you. Um, you are doing amazing things in the community. You just won Miss Arizona. So we're going to talk <laughs> more about that as we continue to go about in the show. But first, let's talk about your new brand launch in January 2020, Life in the Fast Lane. What does that mean and how do we manage it? Oh, yes. Um, that is something very exciting and very close to my heart. 
because as a competitive swimmer, I'm always trying to uh, swim in the fast lane. And I think we can all relate to that um, on our everyday lifestyle. You know, when you when you wake up in the morning, the you know the alarm's ringing. You hop out of bed. You take a quick shower. You wake the kids up. You rush them through breakfast. You shove them, you know, their mouths with cornflakes. You get in the car. You you, you know you, you kiss your partner on the cheek, and you end up tailgating to the freeways and drop your kids off, and then you got to pick them up after soccer practice and make dinner, do yoga, and then it repeats over and over again and the more and more it feels like our lives have turned into a a grueling race toward a finish line, it seems like we never reach it. And noticing how everybody is just speeding up their lives nowadays, it's just um, a a very stressful, uh, a very, very stressful level that has been brought to everybody's life. And so I'm taking notice to that and trying to teach the fact that, hey, you know what, slow down to speed up. And a lot of times we have to take that break and take a breath and, and figure out what that needs to, to happen in order to manage our life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's so important, right, because, you know, it is. it's like with the holidays. That was a, a time to <laughs> kind of slow down for some people, but some of us, probably did not we probably continue to try to do all of it and i want you to can you talk more about that balancing it all and how what why that's so important to make sure we be able we're able to balance it in order to continue to be successful yeah that's for sure it's it's very important to balance you know people want to actually slow down because they feel their lives are spinning out of control uh which is ironic because speed has always been promoted as a way to help us achieve in the world or to be successful. Uh, the major cause in the, in the speed up of life is, is not so much things like we think technology might be or, or the holidays might be. It's more of the, the nature of, of, that has to change and we all have to change internally how we look at each and every one of our lives. And that is really, really hard to do. But Slowing down is actually a beautiful way to to balance your life. It's just a matter of being aware of it, and uh, the, you know we we just need to take a look at it and and just being aware internally. And I think during the holidays, especially right now, um, gosh, we've got to start looking to the moment and balance our life with with creativity and relaxed tranquility. Um, and that's what something that people are craving. It's just a matter of stopping <laughs> and and just recognize the pressures of work, the demands of technology, the expectations of a fast action society, um, and really just kind of stop at at the wayside um, and see what you know what's going on within you. And and a lot of times, you know, we can slow down just by doing something that we in, you know we 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 can do on a very slow process, like, you know, maybe doing the dishes or, or walking the dog um, or going to yoga <laughs> instead of always stomping on the gas pedal all the time. Yes, yes, that is so important. Thank you for sharing that and sounding some light on that, you know, whether it's meditating, whether it's yoga, do something fun. Make sure you right. keep yourself balanced. Right. I love that. Right, right. I, I know, you know, it's a struggle for me to even slow down as it is with, with many people. But I think the key is to be able to, to you know, dictate yourself in, in the proper rhythm and, and geared to, you know, geared to what is going on, whether you are playing with a child or writing a paper or talking to friends. You know, one thing that keeps this life from whirling out of control, we have to really kind of stop and, and you know, what are that? What's that old saying? You know, smell the roses. <laughs> mhm, mhm. Yes, <laughs> I yep. love it. So, Deborah, it's obvious you enjoy competing. So, tell us about tell us about the pageant you just participated in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, actually, it's been a couple months, and um, it was a pageant uh, that I chose because there's so many out there to choose from 
And uh, when I was approached by the national director out of Florida, who actually saw me celebrate my 60th birthday on Facebook, and she contacted me and said, you know, we'd love for you to, you know, to compete in this. And and I thought to myself, well, you know, I I don't I haven't done any of that since I was like 12 years old. <laughs> but but I'm always up for a challenge. And if you're up for a challenge, you never know what the outcome is going to be. Um, and that's why you know accelerating in the fast lane can only be your own responsibility of your journey. And success is kind of an inside job. Once you take your responsibility for your journey, your life will change. And I took this upon as a challenge and a responsibility of my journey. And I thought, what better way to have so much fun than to go with a pageant that fits my needs? Um, And that was important to me because this type of pageant, first of all, does things differently. They, when they interview, um, they don't talk about politics or religion. Um, they only want to talk about your experience and experiences and your expertise. Um, that's why most, you know, later life age women like myself, you know, win these kind of pageants because we have a lot of experience. We have a lot of expertise, <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, so we have a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. But um, it uh, and the other thing I loved about it was um, you, you don't have to have a talent um, because I, as a competitive swimmer, can't bring a swimming pool on stage um, to right. showcase people. But the third thing that really um, I loved is that I was able to showcase my platform. And my platform, I have three of them, uh, which are uh, animal rescue societies, um, military vets, because my dad is a vet, and thirdly, um, adults to swim, because the area of adults learning to swim has always been underrated, and because of children um, that always seem to be drowning in pools, more in the summer than any time, and more in Arizona and Florida, um, that that can actually be something that could be prevented And the best way to be preventive of this is to teach adults how to swim. So um, as a matter of fact, adults, gosh, you know, there's about 10 adults that drown every day, every day, all year long. And that's a statistic that is not brought to our attention. So I believe in prevention. And one of those preventions is I think adults should learn to swim. It's, It's all that that whole saying of it starts at the top, like in the corporations. It all starts at the top. Well, same with when it comes to families. And my heart just sinks when I, I find out that adults don't know how to swim. And what better way to save a child instead of running into the house calling 911 when you can actually save a child because you know how to swim. So, so you know, you pick and choose what you feel is going to work for you. Um, and you start accelerating your own success, and you just have to take control of it. It's 100%. You, you, you have to believe in you, and I believe that uh, confidence plays a big part in that. Yes, I love that. And for our listeners that are listening, hopefully you're taking these nuggets down because Deborah <laughs> is definitely giving us some golden nuggets here. So yes, as ma'am. <laughs> As the new Miss Arizona, what advice do you have to win such a contest? Well, like, um, yeah, oh, gosh, that that's a very good question because I believe um, it had a lot to do with confidence. Okay. Bottom line, the power to believe in yourself is something that gives you a major rush and I believe that confidence is not something you have. It's something that you create. And if you believe in you, you can create anything you want to do. And so um, I believe a lot of it has to do with, well, I guess there's about three things that really can help you with confidence. Um, mm-hmm. I believe the power of the body language, um, how you walk in a room, how you hold your shoulders back, um, how you make eye contact, um, how how you are poised um, is is important. How, adopting a, a power pose, you know, one of the deepest ways to increase confidence is to connect 
to your inner power. And that pose, that strength from within is is very, very powerful, just very powerful. Um, so I, I believe that can be a huge, huge thing. The the other thing is to, to change your core beliefs about confidence too. Um, knowing that it's a mindset that you can focus on you, um, this sort of core belief can can actually have you just reach for the sky. Um, being more confident doesn't mean you never fail. Um, in fact, there are plenty of ways to be confident even in the process of failing. But being confident means that if you do fail, you can pick yourself up and try again and, and instead of throwing in the towel. True confidence really embodies a, a willingness to go on even when you're faced with adversity and always focusing on on what you're grateful for at the same time. So no matter what happens, you can face it and you can come out on top. So really having that type of mindset is, is key. The third area um, is focus on the best outcomes for any type of situation. So it's all in the attitude, all in the attitude. So those are the three areas that I, I really believe can help you with, with confidence, your body language, uh, your mindset, and your attitude. Yes, body language, mindset, and attitude. And attitude is sits very high, right? That sits oh, high yes. on the list. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. It's all about the attitude. But, you know, life brings things up and down. And if you want to, you know, accelerate in, in the fast lane, you have to be uh, able to take on anything that that's coming at you, you know, like like if you're driving down a freeway, for example, you know, have you ever been behind a truck and all of a sudden a rock hits your windshield? You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, what right, do you right. do? You know, you find a solution with it. Um, let's say you're you're driving down the freeway and and you're tired or or you want to stop, you know, and and rest. You you pull off to the slow lane and you get off at the rest stop. So there's these decisions that you have to make every day and you just have to, you know, find your own solution. And, and to do that, you just take the responsibility of your own journey. Yes, I love that. So, Deborah, you are <laughs> one of the first female sports broadcasters with, with CBS TV and NBC TV. Wow, wow, wow. So <laughs> I'm dating myself, now. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I love it. I, I loved it. Um, back in the day, uh, yeah, it was it was actually pretty tough, Ashley, because back then women weren't really, you know, giving out football scores of any sort. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, Jane Kennedy, Phyllis George, and myself. We were kind of the three musketeers, and um, we did what we could. It was a short-lived career because, again, it wasn't something that women did like they do today. So I'm very, very proud that women are doing it today. Um, but I loved it. Um, I come from a very athletic background of my family, and I, I totally enjoyed it and would do it again in a moment. But it's it's all about, you know, if if you if you love your work, um, you will succeed. So from there, I've been able to become a professional speaker um, with ease because of my background, and I just I just really enjoyed the enjoyed that that time era of my life. Yes. Well, that's, that's such a high achievement, you know, and I just want to commend you because, <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't, you don't talk to one of the first female, female sports broadcasters on a daily basis, right? <laughs> so I just want to commend you for just being amazing. All oh, right? <laughs> you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Well, you know, one of the things about um, – success is is you have to model the habits of successful people and Ashley you do a great job of that and and I love to, you know hanging out with people and surrounding yourself with with people that are successful um, you know we, we study people's um, you know if, when you study a person's behavior um, be obsessed with learning as much as you can possibly from them um, mm -hmm. is going to only enrich your life and as a matter of fact, as, as Jim Rowe once said, um, who I admire very much, he said, you know, you are the average of, of the five people that you spend the most time with. So 
whoever your your circle of friends are, um, you have to really, you know, find out if these are the people that you really, you know, are they lifting you? Are they holding you back? Um, if it's the latter, it's time to find new friends. <laughs> but at the end of the yes. day, it it all comes down to how bad you want to succeed. And one of those areas, which you do a great job of, um, is modeling the habits of successful people. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what is some advice, Deborah, that you would give to the listeners who are looking to grow in the media industry? Oh, the media industry is always such a um, a passion to, to stay connected with. Um, I just believe that that you have to definitely do the work that you love. Um, you know, if you don't build your dream, someone will hire you to help build theirs. So you have to decide, are you going to build yours or or um, are you going to, to let other people build build it for you? But I think one advice I, I believe is is, you know, we can't change what goes on around us until we change what goes on within us. And so I believe it all starts with you. And the best way to start with you is to always question why. Why, you know, your why is your purpose. And if you don't know why you're here, it can be hard to keep going on when life knocks you down. So, but the question can, can be, you know, how do you, find, how do you find that why? Well, I know that your purpose won't magically, you know, fall in your lap or anything, um, you've got to make sure and, and figure out your life purpose, um, your soul purpose, especially when it comes to the media. Um, your purpose won't find you if, if you just don't take any action. You've got to take action, and you have to make decisions on a daily basis. So you have to take a step back and ask yourself, what do I want, and why do I want it? Um, and that can be any step of your career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do I want and why do I want it for our listeners? That right, are right. Yeah, because answering that question is what will will allow you to get to where you want to go faster. And when you do work that you love, the world becomes your playground. It really does. So there is a fast lane and there's a slow lane. Um, you just have to decide, you know, when you want to be in, in particular lanes, even in the in the middle lane. There's a middle lane as well. Um, on airplane rides, I always say that that middle seat's like a friendship, friendship seat. Um, yeah. <laughs> same thing when, same thing when you're on the, the freeway. You know, there's a slow lane, a fast lane, but that middle lane. You know, that sometimes you have to just rest in there. But you have to decide. You have to really decide what your why is, and and perform from there. Yes, that why is so important, right? Being passionate and loving it what you're is. doing. It is. It is. You know, life is so short, and if you do the work that you love, especially when it comes to the media, I promise you that success will follow. It will definitely follow. It, if you are not living in alignment with your purpose today, um, you know, it, it, today is the day to change that um, because the world is just waiting for your gifts, and we have to put that out there. Do the work that makes you come alive inside. Um, will allow you to discover things about yourself that you never even knew existed. And for me, winning the recent Mrs. Arizona is exactly an example of that. I had no idea until I put myself out there, not thinking about what other people were going to say or what my husband or family were going to say. If anything, they're all trying the crown on now. So (laughs) (laughs) I love it. But you have to take control. You really have to take control. Your entire outlook on life will change if you take control. And I'm so glad you shine light on ignoring what people say, right? Because a lot of people right. dream because they're worried about what people think or what people are going to say. Exactly, exactly. You have to tune that out, and you have to look at things on your own terms. Um, and if you're ready to dive in the fast lane and create success, that will happen, but it will only happen when it's on your terms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, Deborah, meetings and yeah. convention planners cited you as one of the best speakers ever heard. Next to <laughs> some of the people such as Bill Clinton, General Colin Powell, Barbara Cochran. Let's talk about that. 
How can <laughs> one reach such an amazing accomplishment? Well, it is, and and I'm I'm proud of it. But it it also goes back to what I was saying earlier about accelerating your success is to model the habits of successful people. So those are the people that I hang out with, um, and when you hang out with them, you're going to you know it's going to influence you. So those are the people that you want in your life if that's the direction that you want to go. Um, so yeah, that, it's really kind of cool. I'm I'm very very proud about that. Well, that's amazing. That's an amazing accomplishment, and you're so <laughs> right about being in those circles, right? And I think people have to realize that your environment is, is important, right? Your circles yes. are important. You know, yes. being able to make sure you're investing in the right people to get where you got to yes. go. Yes, yeah. I mean, if, if you want to be a happy person, but you surround yourself with negative energy, well, you will naturally fall into that state of being. And so it's fair to say that the people in your life influence who you become. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely believe that. And that is so true. That is so true for our listeners that are listening. So make sure that you have the right people in your circle. <laughs> the right exactly. People. And and when you're around that type of environment, as you mentioned, um, you, you may not believe it yet, but if you have 100% control over your confidence, your happiness, you will be successful in life. And when your attitude shifts and you start seeing yourself as the driver, the main driver of of your own life, the game changes. Everything changes. So you you have you have to make that first step. No one else is going to do it for you. Because success it's not random. I think we all can agree that living the life of your dreams requires hard work, a lot of effort, and major persistence. And this is especially true if you're in the process of, of, of the media industry, especially. Um, nothing of value in life comes easy. Um, however, if you become too obsessed with success, you can sometimes be miserable. But similarly, you, you cannot rely on others to create success for you. So it's it's an inside job, as I mentioned. So once you take your responsibility for your journey, again, your life will change. Yes, and, you know, it, it, it reminds me of the name of my show, Creating Your Own Seat at the Table, right? Creating Your Seat exactly. at the Table. <laughs> and, and that is a perfect, perfect example um, because that creation comes from you. Yeah, yeah. So, Deborah, please tell us more about your book, How to Sell Men Without Wearing a Low-Cut Dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, that turned out um, to be my very first book that came out in 2009. The second uh-huh. edition just has been released a couple weeks ago, um, How to Sell to Men Without Wearing a Low-Cut Dress. It's it's a topic that was in my head that I needed to get down on paper And so what developed from this is because women sometimes try too hard to make a sell or to be influential or want, you know, want, you know, something as simple as getting a raise or or wanting things their way. Um, So what I did was I went out and interviewed over 400 men and asked them all kinds of questions about women. And so actually I did not write this book. Men did. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's really fun for men to buy, too, be, uh, to read as well, because then they can see what other men are saying about them. <laughs> oh, nice. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's all about, you know, common mistakes women make selling to male buyers. Um, and I talk about, you know, I talk about the body language. You know, when you're, when you're talking to a male in the hallway at work, or at a mall, how you should stand to um, to you know to to get your way or get their attention um, is is very important. And they gave me those secrets. And then of course, you know, they talk about the essential role of confidence, um, basic motivators men require when purchasing from a woman if a, if a saleswoman is involved. Um, so yeah, it it was really great because. Uh, it was really a lot of fun because you really get the information from the horse's mouth. <laughs> I love it. Do you want to share at least one of your secrets out of the book? I know they have to go purchase it, 
But what would you would you share one of them with us? Oh, absolutely. A lot of it has to do with how you well, I would love to show you the body language portion of it, which I do in my programs. But one of the secrets is your words. Words. How you word things is very important to men. Um, and how you connect with them, you can utilize your words um, by talking their code. You can talk men's code. And it's just a matter of finding out what's important to them. See, men love to go in golf. They love, you know, sports. They love um, going, um, you know, uh, they like, they like uh, video games. They like playing poker. So you always have to be in, involved with what they're doing and understanding their language. For example, um, when they watch movies, um, gosh, find out what kind of movies they like and utilize those words when you're, when you're having a conversation with them. For example, I had a uh, client that actually um, loved the, um, uh, loves Clint Eastwood. And so I would always use the words, you know, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> and he would always respond to that, right? He would always respond uh-huh. to that. And another client that I had, um, when I landed in an airplane for his meeting, I told him that I would text him and text him the words, the eagle has landed. And so I landed, uh, the plane landed, I text him, the eagle has landed. Well, he responded, knowing that that was me, he responded, 10-4. And then I responded, responded, Roger that. So we, here we are having this conversation when I landed on at his city and the airplane there, sitting there before I even got out of my seat, we're having this huge texting conversation back and forth because I'm speaking his code. So just finding out what men like to talk about and utilize that, and that'll get you a lot of attention. So that is one of my secrets. Yes, for our listeners and listeners, I hope you are writing. And Deborah, how can they purchase this amazing book? Oh, all they have to do is go to Amazon. Um, the second edition was just released a couple weeks ago, um, and it's called How to Sell to Men Without Wearing a Low-Cut Dress. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell us more about your different programs that you offer. I offer a lot of fun programs. Um, yes, definitely. A lot of them have to do with Accelerate in the Fast Lane, or working and living in the fast lane. Um, some of the programs are uh, for leaders. A lot of them are for um, uh, uh, salespeople, negotiation people um, that love to really have a lot of fun at the same time. Um, facilitating my programs is key uh, because uh, the less talking I do, the more talking they do. Um, I think it's very important for for them to to interact with one another. So the programs are all about, you know, life in the fast lane, uh, working in the fast lane, succeeding in the fast lane, and ultimately what we're doing in my programs is we are actually slowing down to speed up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So please reach out to Deborah and get in one of her programs. She's, like I say, doing some amazing things. Make sure you get the book and learn those secrets. Learn those secrets <laughs> that she shared with us. So, Deborah, absolutely. I know you you have continued to build multiple tables for yourself. So, I asked all of my guests this question: How did you create your seat at the table? Ah, uh, creating the seat at the table. I love that title. That is just so amazingly spot on to what uh, what we need to get accomplished. And I believe that it is you have to take a risk. You have to take a risk. Um, if you don't take risks, um, you're, you're, not, you're not growing. Um, progress. Progress is, is important. If you can progress, you will grow. And that is a key. And when you take a risk, even like I did, taking a risk running for Mrs. Arizona, you just never know what the outcome is going to be. Mhm, mhm. It is so taking true. those risks. Mm-hmm. Yes, and not being afraid to jump. But I think a lot of people are afraid right. to take risks because of rejection. What are your views exactly. on that? Exactly. That's why they're scared. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
In other words, just grab that seat and sit at that table. Yes. <laughs> so, so all your amazing journey, right? A lot of people, you know, don't want to go through the process, but the process is necessary. So what did Correct. failure what did failure teach you on your journey thus far, Deborah? Oh, good question. Good good question, Ashley. Failure actually is is gosh, I welcome it. I absolutely welcome it um, because it does allow me to slow down, to speed up. When you fail at something, um, I believe the faster you fail, the faster you're going to succeed. So you want to embrace it when it happens, but you also have to just slow down and recognize what it is that you learned from it because chances are you're going to fail again but if you learn from that process beforehand, it is actually going to be a lot less painful. <laughs> yes, yes. Recognizing what you learned from it, key, that is oh, so key. Because a lot of people, absolutely. they stay down there. But you have absolutely. to learn from it. <laughs> absolutely. You have to learn from it. You can't just brush it off. Um, and pick yourself up, wipe your, your knees off, and, and just keep moving forward. <laughs> Yes. So you're very successful. So what did success teach you? What was what? What did it teach me? Yes. What did success teach you on your journey? Oh, my goodness. What did it teach me? It taught me to play big. It really taught me to play big. You know, playing small does not serve the world at all. And anybody, your, your listeners out there, plain small, it just doesn't serve the world. Um, everyone is meant to shine. And it's not just in some people, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same, as a matter of fact. Always try to take advantage of opportunities that come your way. Um, because if you don't, You'll never unleash your true potential. You just won't. And the world will never benefit from what you have to achieve. You just won't. Playing big by voicing your ideas. Um, don't be afraid to fail. And certainly don't be afraid to succeed either. So just play big. That's what it taught me. When I succeed, I know there is more opportunities out there for me. And I keep taking more risks and more risks and more risk. More risk and more risk and more risk, <laughs> listeners, and play big. Stop playing small and play big. Right. Exactly. So we are in the, you know, the fourth quarter. We are in December 2nd. We're finishing up this year and getting ready to walk into another decade. So what can we expect yes. from Deborah the rest of 2019? Oh, uh, for the rest of this year or yes. into the new year, I'd like to take into the new year. You okay. know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue to show my muscles. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna show there is nothing sexier than a woman showcasing her strength, her wisdom, her expertise and brilliancy. And I believe every woman can demonstrate that. Um, especially when it comes to the media, how strong you are by believing that you have, you have viewpoints, you have opinions, perspectives, um, beliefs. Um, it's all about showing your muscles and, and do what, what you want to do and, and trust yourself. Trust that you can do it and you don't have to do it any other way. Superpower your self-discipline. And be the boss. Superpower. <laughs> I love that. Superpower your self-discipline. <laughs> Show your yeah, and just, yeah, and just command your own lane. I mean, just whatever lane you're in, whatever it's the fast lane or the slow lane at the moment, you know, do do what works for you. Yes. So how can our listeners connect with you, Deborah, and follow you on all social media platforms? Oh, I would be delighted. Um, and I'm sure people might have questions too. Um, definitely take advantage of, of my personal email, Deborah at DebraGardner.com, or my website, uh, you can connect with me through there, which is DebraGardner.com. Um, I play on 
Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as much as possible, especially Facebook. I love Facebook friends. So um, please connect with me. I would be delighted to answer any questions. Um, I'd love to hear your stories um, as well because um, I'm always learning. You, you know, you always have to keep learning. Um, my 76-year-old mother who graduated from college at that age always says, you know, you're never too young or too old to hustle. So just keep learning. Yes, just keep learning. And Deborah Garner is somebody to connect with and know. So make sure you all are connecting with her, following her, and supporting her amazing platform. So Deborah, I would like to thank you for coming to the table today, taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. This has been a powerful interview, and I cannot wait to invite you back to the table. Oh, it was a delight, and thank you so much for allowing me to to share this platform with you. I'm just thrilled, and I just want you and all your listeners to be as successful as ever, ending 2019 and going into kickstarting 2020. Yes, 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 and I look forward to continuing to work and collaborate with you in the future. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. So I would like to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger. I would also like to give a special thanks to author Kimberly McLemore and my intern Sarah from Tennessee State University and my intern Vontaria from Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 